Well, we've just published at EPI uh, some data about the performance of the school system across England, uh, and in particular looked at the selective areas of education. And what we find is that at a, a national level, the presence of selective education doesn't appear to either lead to overall better results or worse results. What it does, however, is redistribute uh, the educational attainment between people who get into grammar schools and people who don't. And it also appears to widen the gap between young people from poor backgrounds and uh, young people from more affluent backgrounds. The interesting thing that we find is that in areas that have very few selective schools, very few grammar schools, the gain for students getting into grammar schools, including from poor backgrounds, is greater than in areas that have lots of grammar schools and the cost to students who don't get into the grammar schools is also much less. So the conclusion there actually is that the worst areas to expand grammar schools would be those where we already have a lot of selective education, whereas the areas that would be less controversial and less damaging for students who don't get in would be those areas that don't have many selective schools at the moment. So there is quite a clear sort of piece of policy uh, conclusion there from looking at the existing data. I think it's good to see that the government uh, and the Prime Minister are still talking about the social mobility agenda and how important that is. Uh, there are obviously diff different policies being proposed compared with the Cameron government and uh, we'll look at those very carefully to see what their merits and possible demerits are. But uh, it's important and positive that the government is continuing to talk about that agenda and saying that uh, a core part of the government's uh, purpose is going to be around the social mobility issue.